Welcome back to the channel. In this week's episode, we are tackling floors. To remind you, I had tile floors in this laundry room that I removed a little over a month ago now. And since then, I added all of the big cabinet elements to this room that I needed to work around in order to be able to put in the new floors. Now that that was out of the way, we can finally get started. Before I could lay out my new floor, I had to do a bit more of prep work, having a smooth leveled subfloor is super important. There was still grout all around the perimeter of the room, so I had to go and remove it all. I used a floor chisel and a hammer to tap and remove it. There was still some raised mortar left behind on the floor and I used a floor scraper to remove it. I then spent the next two hours chiseling away any mortar left behind. I want to thank the sponsor of today's video, Shaker and Spoon. Shaker and Spoon is a monthly cocktail subscription service that delivers the craft cocktail experience right to your front door. Listen, I've been working extremely hard on this laundry room remodel and flipping furniture to help cover the over the budget costs. Enjoying these cocktails has been a really nice experience. Shaker and Spoon is for anybody who wants to impress their date, have drinks with friends, or if you're like me and want to just have a nice drink to sit down and watch TV at the end of the day. Every month you receive a box straight to your front door that includes all of the ingredients needed to make up to 12 drinks. It is so convenient to have all of these rare ingredients included like honey pear sodas, strawberry rhubarb syrup, barrel aged coffee bitters to name a few. This way you can skip having a hard time finding these cocktail ingredients. You also get three one of a kind recipe cards that are easy to read and follow to make the cocktails. The only thing you need to provide is your favorite liquor to personalize the cocktail recipes to your preference or you can omit the liquor altogether and make them virgin. Use the link down in the description box and my code to get $20 off your Shaker and Spoon subscription. Thank you again to Shaker and Spoon for sponsoring today's video. Before I finished the prep work, I measured my space to determine the layout of the flooring. I'll explain more on how to do it in a bit. There was a few pieces of hardy board I wanted to remove and replace, so I unscrewed them, measured, and cut the necessary size with just a knife and a spare 1x3 as a guide. Cutting hardy is sort of like cutting sheetrock. I secured it to the subfloor with screws.
it'll just slide it. Oops. When laying vinyl planks, it's important to remember to begin on the left corner of the room and work per row before moving on to the next one. You also want to keep in mind that your planks should run along the longest wall of your room. When measuring your space to determine your layout, divide the width of the room by the width of the boards to see how many planks it'll take. If one side is left with a small plank, split the difference so that both ends look more similar. For the length of the room, divide the length of the room by the length of the planks and determine how many planks it will take, sort of the same as the width. Suggested that if it's less than 8 inches on one end to split the difference just like you did with the width. It's recommended to stagger your joints at the beginning of your second row and alternating after that, meaning the first plank on the second row should be shorter than your first. Starting from the left side of the length of the room really does make a big difference because you're able to just lay your next plank right into the locking mechanism. If you start on the wrong side, you'll end up working backwards and having to slide the next plank under the previous plank, making it super difficult. I know this because I did this. I didn't realize I started on the wrong left side and I hope that makes sense. So I had to remove what I have started and start on the correct end. It's recommended to close the distance by tapping on the edge of the plank on the longer side before tapping the shorter side into place. If you do not tap and remove that small gap, your flooring will not be waterproof. I mostly use the utility knife to cut my planks by scoring and then snapping along the score line. I used my jigsaw for the cuts that went around objects and that were a bit more complicated. Overall, the entire room took me about 10 cases and about five hours to complete.
I picked up a couple of these transition pieces, cut them to fit the doorway, and installed them. Instructions say you can glue or nail them, but I chose to nail them. I then moved on to installing all new baseboards and door trim. I used prime pine for this, 1x4s for the baseboards, and 1x3s for the door trim. I made sure to bevel each baseboard at a 45 degree angle where they met each other. To cover the gap of the flooring to the locker unit built-ins, I used some small 2-inch trim. I'm not a huge fan of quarter rounds, so I used this instead for a more modern sleek look, but you could definitely use quarter rounds wherever you need to cover any gaps. So it's probably hard to see, but when I put this trim here, I cut this a little too short so you can see the gap still a little bit. So what I'm going to do... And here, I'll show you up close. See how when I nail it, it's going to push it in so you can see that gap. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add just a small little shim. So that way when it's pushed back, you can't see it. it see, it still lines up here, so it should be good. And now when it pushes in, when I nail it, you won't see the gap. Okay, so I finally decided I'm gonna go ahead and paint this door to solve the dilemma. I think adding black is really, well, it's not black. It's like a really, really deep, rich brown that almost looks black. Um, I think it's gonna add the perfect contrast to all of the light colors that are going on. Obviously, the trim isn't painted yet. That's something that we're gonna take care of next week. The majority of you guys decided or agreed that it would look better if it was painted the same color as this door that's over here. I temporarily removed it because I need to add spacers to the top because since I added the trim to the window, I mean to the door frame, it hits the door frame and then it also is rubbing on the bottom of the uh, trim or the baseboards. So. Anyways, I've decided I'm gonna use that same color over on this door. I'm gonna go ahead and paint this, give it two good coats, and that should be good enough. It's in the Scuff Defense line by Bayer. It's really, really good paint. It's really scratch resistant. I'm really surprised at how well it works without having like a top coat or anything. So I might even think that this might make a really good furniture paint. So I think I might start using this specific line for that. I don't know, maybe, we'll see.
Remember, this is what the floor used to look like, and here's the results of the vinyl plank flooring installed. Be sure to tune in as I will be painting all of the baseboards and taking care of any other painting needs next week, as well as adding some shoe storage to the room. I hope you found this video helpful. If you've been thinking about installing vinyl flooring, don't hesitate. It's super DIY friendly and easy to install with minimal tools required. Thank you so much for being here. I love y'all be kind and I'll see y'all next week. Bye.